Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 8, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Well, I think I mentioned on Monday or last Friday that I'm going to talk a little bit more about DNS uh, this week. The article that I published earlier today is about DNS spoofing done by ISPs, in this particular case by Comcast or Xfinity. It actually all started with me not being able to get to bleepingcomputer.com. Uh, you may know that security news site. Well, it turned out that uh, Comcast identified the website as malicious for some reason, something that often happens sort of as a false positive for security news sites like this. And certainly at the Internet Storm Center, we have had issues with that in the past as well. Now, Comcast is not just blocking the responses from its own DNS servers, but it actually appears to be actively intercepting DNS queries to any DNS server. And uh, I'm talking a little bit about how to identify if your ISP is doing that. Sort of, I find the best way uh, to actually figure out if your traffic is intercepted, part of using DNSSEC, which of course is not always supported, is that you take a look at how long responses take. If responses are very consistent, no matter what DNS server you're using. And as an example here with Comcast, I'm actually using a Chinese DNS server that has exactly the same response time as any other DNS server that I tried with a Comcast. Another method that's not always as telling is looking at the TTL values being returned, whether or not they're basically consistent across these uh, different DNS servers. Whenever a recursive DNS server is caching a DNS response, it will start decrementing its time to live, uh, depending on how long it's already sitting in the cache. And if you have multiple DNS servers that are actually just one DNS server, well, then the time to live between these DNS servers will be consistent, meaning that, uh, well, they cache the initial response at the same time and the TTL will be decrementing accordingly. I found this a little bit less telling because quite often when large ISPs like Comcast or Xfinity are doing these interceptions, they're using, well, multiple DNS servers that are not always sort of easy to distinguish. And uh, that way, uh, this can risk get you a little bit uh, less consistent results, I find, than just looking at the round trip time of the DNS queries. And of course, one problem with a DNS interception like this is if you are trying to use a specific DNS service that does filter DNS queries the way you want them to be filtered, well, uh, that may not work if your ISP is instead responding uh, to your DNS queries that you think are being resolved by the service, but are actually being resolved by your ISP, who may use a different block list than the service that you intend to use. Best option here is DNS over TLS, uh, DNS over HTTPS. So if you are already using an internal resolver, and you often do this in the form of your router slash firewall, make sure it sends queries via TLS to whatever upstream DNS service you consider trusted. And two researchers, which uh, I believe are independent from each other, did release, uh, first of all, a proof of concept and then also a detailed analysis of a recent vulnerability in web logic. This is CVE 2024-21006. The impact of the vulnerability is that the attacker is able to retrieve arbitrary data from the WebLogic server without having to authenticate. CVSS score is only a 7.5 on this vulnerability because it is just information leakage, but given the critical information often dealt with by WebLogic, I would certainly think that's something that you have to pay attention to and likely expedite patching if you haven't already addressed this vulnerability. 
And in class, I often mention the dangers of the eval function in JavaScript. After all, it's only one letter away from evil. The latest example is a pdf.js library and also React PDF. These are libraries that allow you to render PDFs in web applications. And yes, they suffered from this problem where the eval function was used and then input was able to execute JavaScript on the server, which of course comes down to arbitrary remote code execution. These vulnerabilities have been fixed now after security researcher Thomas Rinsma did discover and report these vulnerabilities. And then two little updates, corrections to stories I covered yesterday. First of all, the Malvat VPN story. It is actually more a vulnerability in Android itself. Remember when you sort of switch between servers in a VPN where some DNS settings may be leaking. I mentioned how it's sort of related a little bit of what DNS APIs you're using, but it's really more an Android issue, not in this particular VPN implementation. Thanks for your listener on X to actually point this out. And then we have a response from the tiny proxy team. Remember, that was a vulnerability I talked about where Cisco did report a vulnerability to them, but that hadn't apparently been fixed yet. And Cisco still released details about the vulnerability. Well, uh, they're now stating that the vulnerability has been fixed in the master branch on their Git repository, but there is no actual new release that has uh, been pushed out yet. They also say that the vulnerability, while it is a remote code execution vulnerability, only really happens after authentication complete. So as long as you are adding authentication to your proxy, it should not really be a big problem. Either way, probably something that you want to address, want to patch once they release that next new and great version of a tiny proxy. And that's it for today. Thanks to everybody who showed up to our workshop today here at RSA. I actually made the website that we used for the workshop, including the instructions public. If you're interested, you can play a little bit with this. I'm not going to do much maintenance on it. So if uh, something breaks or such, we really just set it up uh, for this workshop. But feel free to email me and uh, I'll try to restart whatever. Uh, be nice to the site. And uh, yes, it's sansapi.com. Actually, best if you hit it with www.sansapi.com. And I hope to see some of you today on Wednesday here at our annual panel. Well, uh, that's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.